welcome to the Love Sock Wool YouTube channel. My name is Sarah and I am known as Love Sock Wool on mainly Instagram. But you can find me on Ravelry as well and under the same name. Um, hello, welcome. As soon as I pressed record, my dog started barking. I don't know if you can hear that or not. Today is December something, 4th. It's a Monday. And we are well into Advent season. Hold on, I'm about to do a decrease stitch on my sock. I wanted to record some footage of, of what I'm working on this December and Advent and Christmas season because it's so much fun and I look forward to it every year. I ha And as always, I always try to knit and work on way more than is remotely humanly possible but, but you know if I just get a fraction of it done I consider I consider it a win um I have many yarny advents or advent calendars I should say that I have purchased a long time ago this year and it's so fun when they start getting delivered and can start opening them up. I am notorious for opening advents way before you're supposed to. I know you're supposed to wait, wait until December 1st, but I do not do that. I start knitting on them way before December 1st. Um, so my, I think I'll just jump right into my main advent project that I have been actually working on in, in getting it prepped for Advent since July of this year. Um, it's in this basket right here. So I had decided back in July that I wanted to knit a Cozy Memories Advent blanket using just uh, Advent calendars on it. So in order to do that, I, what I wanted to do was get a Cozy Memories blanket 24 squares wide. And it took me since July to do that. <laughs> so I will show it to you. I've, I have posted on Instagram this blanket, but not recently. So it took me to the end of October this year to, to get it 24 squares wide. So I will attempt to show this to you. It's so big. It's probably a little bit bigger <laughs> than it, it needs to be. It is definitely bigger than it needs to be. In hindsight, I kind of wish I had just done 12 squares wide and then just each advent would be two rows because it's 24 items <laughs> that you get in a advent calendar. Now, okay, be let me preface this. Before I show you anything, there will be spoilers. I have four yarn advent calendars. A homespun house, Lolo did it the first Christmas, that one, not the Wednesday one, the the first Christmas one, Ruby and Roses, and Hedgehog Fibers. Those are my four yarn advents, advent calendars. If you have any of those advent calendars, you're going to see, uh, you're going to see what some of the days look like. And it's day four, we're on day four, but I have knit through day nine on the hedgehog one. Cause so two of the advent calendars I've started knitting into my blanket and I have gotten through day nine. Yeah, I think that's right. So hopefully it's okay to show you this. Um, and I apologize if you have uh, either Ruby and Roses or hedgehog fibers <laughs> because you're gonna see some squares. Um, so I started knitting with the hedgehog fibers yarn advent calendar first because I had finished getting my blanket to the 24 squares wide and so I immediately opened up day one and started my hedgehog fibers row because the idea is that I want to have an entire row of days one through 24 on my blanket okay so let me see if I can figure out how to show this okay here we go also I have days one through eight to knit on the ruby and roses so if you have the Ruby and Roses Advent and you don't want to see through day eight, go get some coffee or something. Okay, here we go. Okay, so just to explain, these two rows here 
are my foundation rows. They're not advents. They're just, I just wanted to get <laughs> two rows finished. This row here is the hedgehog. This one is Ruby and Roses. And this is how far I've gotten. I am working on day nine of hedgehog fibers advent. This one is my favorite day so far. Day eight. <laughs> it's just this awesome bright lime green. It's so awesome. And then the top row is Ruby and Roses. I just love it. It's so much fun. I'm, I'm so glad that I decided to, to do this blanket. Now, okay, there's no way I can show the width of this on this, this video, but it, it's pretty, pretty wide. So I can spread this out on my king size blanket, on my king size bed upstairs. Like it, it's a king size blanket. If I can, you know, if take 20 years, it will be a, it will be a king size blanket. <laughs> so I'm loving it. I'm really enjoying it. I love that it's a, it's a very much a no stress project. Um, I only let myself open up the next day of the advent once I finish a square. So I don't know what day 10 of the hedgehog advent will look like because I haven't opened it yet. I'm not allowed to until I get this square finished. So, so yeah, so it's very, very, very likely that I, I mean, I'm not even trying to keep up with this for the whole of advent season. I just would like to get as many squares put into this as I can. Um, yeah, but it's very likely that, you know, you know, say I get busy and December 10th is going to roll around and I will not have opened it because I'm, I won't be done <laughs> with this square. So it's possible I won't even open all of the advents days during advent because I'm not going to have time to get to them. So we'll see. I'm not putting any pressure on myself to hit a certain quota of squares. That's, that's not important. I just want to enjoy, wanna enjoy the process. So this is my main advent project. Um, and so far I've only, like I said, I've only gotten hedgehog fibers and ruby and roses knit into this. And I would like to get Lolo did it in a homespun house in it as well. Um, but you know, honestly, it's going to take years. <laughs> so I don't know when I will get to it all, but I sure am enjoying what I've gotten done so far. Okay, now my next advent project I will show you, which I hope is, not, I mean, it's gonna spoil it for you if you have the Lolo did it advent, the first Christmas, that, that one. This is days one through, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. I've knit through day eight. Is that right? Yes. I am knitting scrappy socks with the Lolo Did It Advent. Would you like to see it? If you do not want to see it because you do not want to be spoiled because you have this Advent, I welcome you to go get another cup of coffee <laughs> um, or some sparkling water or something while I show you this. Um, it's so much fun. I'm so happy I started some scrappy socks with this advent because it's very special. So this, the Lolo Did It advent is particularly special to me because the, the theme of, the, of this yarn advent is what advent is actually about. And that is we are waiting for the birth of Jesus, the coming Messiah who has come to rescue us and save us. And that is why I love this Advent so much. Um, each, each day comes wrapped in a beautiful wrapper. It's like a nativity scene. And each day comes with a Bible verse. And each colorway name is, you know, a kind of appropriate to that Bible verse, that Bible verse. I'm trying to, I, I, everything's kind of far away in a basket. I would show you day one, but anyway, 
hold on, let me grab my journal. I've got, I'm trying to write down all the colorway names. Like day one is Living Stone. Day two is Light of the World. Day three is O Night Divine. Um, all, kind of, you know, Bible, um, Christmas, <laughs> Advent <laughs> type names. Um, okay, so I have started my socks in tandem. And here they are, days one through eight. So the way I knit my plain vanilla socks, my recipe, I counted up like how many rows I usually do for my cuff, how many rows I usually do for a leg, how many rows are usually in my gusset, foot, toe, etc. And then I added all those numbers up, divided them by 24, and it gave me an even number of seven. <laughs> so each day I'm knitting seven rows. And I'm really, really enjoying this process. And I love that I'm doing them both in tandem. And I have day nine wound up and ready to go. So, so yes, they are in this little basket here. So I'm really enjoying my Lolo Did It Advent scrappy socks. Um, yes. Okay, I guess those are the main Advent projects I'm working on. Yeah. I honestly have not cast on a whole lot of Christmas socks yet. But I'll show you the ones I have. <laughs> um, okay, and some of the ones I've, I've started in recent days are not technically Christmas socks, but they feel Christmassy to me. But I'll show you an actual Christmas sock first that I'm really loving, and it's Holly Press Fibers, and it's called Wrapping Presents. And I'm knitting these toe up for fun because I haven't done a toe up sock in a while. Um, it's such a pretty fun colorway. Kind of looks like a, a candy cane. And it, come, it comes with a really pretty green uh, mini. And this is a lovely Lock and Lou stitch marker that has like, it looks like peppermint candy in there. <laughs> I'm like obsessed with Lock and Lou stitch markers right now. All of them are so amazing. I'm developing quite a collection of them. Okay, what's in here? Oh, I've, I, I, I do have another Advent project, I forgot. <laughs> I have the Freckled Whimsy Advent skein um, that I have gotten started and wound up both of the 50 gram skeins and so it's a 24 stripe self-striping sock yarn. And let's see, today's day four. So here's day one and two of the stripes. But I will show you the, the other sock I have quite a bit more knit. Um, so again, if you do not want to see the stripes because you have the Freckled Whimsy Advent Skein, please go get another cup of coffee or something or some chocolate if you don't want to be spoiled. You have been duly warned. Here we go. <laughs> and this is my first year ever getting the um, Freckled Whimsy Advent Skein. And it's so lovely. And these are some little Lock and Loose stitch markers. It's Mr. and Mrs. Winter Gnomes. It's so cute. Mrs. has braids for her hair and Mr. has a lovely beard. <laughs> I love them, so cute. Okay, so the, so yeah, I did have one more advent project, I just forgot. <laughs> All right. Okay, a couple more socks that I've started recently that are not exactly Christmas socks, but to me, they seem really Christmassy. I started a Lolo Did It Every Flavor Beans sock. I have knit this colorway before. It's a Harry Potter colorway, which of course I love. Um. I've knit this colorway before and I can't remember who I gave the finished bear to. I've, I either gave them to Priscilla or Juliet, my daughters. I don't remember which one and they probably wore them into the ground. They probably don't exist anymore. So I need another pair. And this just looks Christmassy to me. It just looks like, I don't know, Christmas ornaments in the snow or something like that. The mini at the top for the cuff is diamond. 
Um, and this is the on the low original sock base. And um, when you go to Lauren's website, Lulu did it. Her listings of her sock yarns, she will, there's a, if you slide the pictures over, she always gives a picture with recommendations for what contrast colors look good with that particular colorway. And diamond was one of them, so I did it. <laughs> and then this is also a Lolo did it colorway, but I don't remember the name. It's just a really amazing hot pink, but I don't remember the name. And I already had it. I didn't purchase it with the Every Flavor Beans. I just already had it. So super enjoying these. I'm knitting on nine inch circular needles and they're 2.25 millimeter US ones and they're the Chow Goo nine inch needles. Um, and I'm trying to, or I am, uh, knitting the gusset. I, when I, after I turned the heel, I um, picked up the gusset with the nine inch needles it's a little fiddly, a little bit tight at first, but once you get a couple of rounds knit, it starts to get a little bit easier. So I have all these stitch markers to mark the, um, the instep stitches, which are here. And then these are all the gusset stitches here. And then I have a marker in the middle just to help with counting, getting back down to that original number, which is 64 total. So it's a 64 stitch sock. <laughs> okay. Loving this, it's very festive. Okay, and then the other sock I've been really enjoying knitting on, um, which I don't think is a Christmas colorway. It might be, maybe some of you will know. I don't know, I don't think it's a Christmas colorway, but it's very festive looking to me. <laughs> it's the um, colorway of the month from Hedgehog Fibers, and it's called Meet Me at Midnight but it just looks like Christmas lights on a Christmas tree, doesn't it? I love it. I really, really love this. And then this is the, um, where did I put my advent blanket? It's the green from one of the, one of the minis, day eight. I just thought it looked so good with this colorway, so. I'm really enjoying these socks. This is a 68 stitch sock. Here's the mini. It's just so juicy, punchy. Kind of matches my watch band as well. <laughs> I like this color. <laughs> so this is a 68 stitch sock and I'm hoping it would fit. It would definitely fit Ben or um, Marshall. Both of them have basically the same size feet. So I would like to have more of my man-sized socks in my family. Um, sock whips going because I always have tons and tons and tons that fit me and the girls, but not so many that would fit Ben and Marshall. So I need to, I need to do something about that. So really loving this. This is again, Meet Me at Midnight. It was the November colorway of the month from Hedgehog Fibers. Um, if you're not aware, Hedgehog Fibers, the website, I mean, she sells her yarn like all over the world in, countless local yarn shops and online yarn shops. But you can purchase um, the Hedgehog Fibers directly from Ireland, <laughs> from hedgehogfibers.com. And every month she has a colorway of the month that she only dyes up for, for that month. And this was November's. I, I'm not sure what December's is yet. It might be Pinkmas which was, but that was the colorway from last year, but she, but it's in her shop again this year. So I don't know if that's her colorway of the month for December or if she's gonna do another one. I haven't checked. I have noticed that whatever the colorway of the month is, it doesn't go up on the first of the month. Like it might be like a week into the month before you actually see it. So keep checking <laughs> and let me know if you, um, if you see it, because I would like to know what the December colorway of the month is. Um, I've also noticed with Hedgehog Fibers, I have been purchasing Hedgehog Fibers sock yarn for years, um, usually from US online shops, um, but whenever I purchase it from her, her shop in Ireland, the base is better. 
did she change her bases? Because I'm telling you, it's different than it has been. Um, the Hedgehog Fiber sock, sock Yarn base is quite unique. Um, I would say, though, that it tends to be a bit splitty because it's, it's a 90% Superwash Merino Nylon, 10% Nylon. Did I say that right? 90% Superwash Merino, 10% Nylon. But in the last year or two, the base is different and it's plumper. And I don't know how to describe it, but I absolutely love it. So whatever she's doing, I hope she keeps doing it because it's really amazing. I, I love it. It's one of my favorite sock yarns to knit with. Okay, I showed that, I showed that. I guess those are the main socks I've been working on. I have a plethora of other socks surrounding me. I am working on here. Maybe we'll just go for a little walk. I'm gonna go get my West Yorkshire Spinners uh, Christmas colorway, which is called Nutcracker. I forgot to bring it over. It's over here. Okay. Sorry if I'm making you dizzy. I don't mean to do that. Okay. Let's get plopped back down here. All right, because I do have the first sock done, which is amazing. So this is the West Yorkshire Spinners Christmas colorway for 2023, and it's called Nutcracker, and it's on the sparkle base, which is so much fun. I love it. And I do have the second one going. I am so excited because um, Lock and Lou has a Nutcracker stitch marker or progress keeper, and I ordered it, and I think it's coming today, so I'm so excited. I love ordering from Lock and Lou also because she's in Wisconsin and I'm in Minnesota. So when she ships her package to me, I get it like in two days. It's, it's amazing because <laughs> we're basically neighbors. <laughs> but isn't that a fun colorway? I just am really excited. I hope I can get this one finished or this pair finished before the end of December. And again, 64 stitch sock, just plain vanilla, regular slip stitch heel, gusset, etc. All right. Um, I did receive more spoilers are coming. I did receive my December Yarnable. Again, if you have not received it, look away if you don't want to see it. Um, but I will show you that as well. That it came yesterday on a Sunday. Why am I getting mail on a Sunday? It's from the postal service. Why am I getting mail on Sunday? I don't understand this. But it did come and it is adorable. It is called Frosty Fox and I love it. It is gorgeous. I, I really want to knit this immediately. And then it also came with a Simply Serving stitch marker. It looks like it's a fox holding like a cup of cocoa. <laughs> and then it also came with a really cute um, yarn cozy for <coughs> oh, Jane is barking um, for when you cake up your yarn. Hold on. <coughs> oh, is it the post? <gasps> it's the postman. Do you see it? You see that beautiful truck right there? He's bringing me lock and loose stitch markers and hopefully some other things. <laughs> not look like my usual postman. It's not. It is, it is a new one. I hope they know what they're doing. We have some strange things happen with the postal service around here. <laughs> um, okay. Jane will be barking as the, the postman is walking around. Actually, it's not a postman. It's a postwoman. <laughs> they all wear the same clothes. Um, so yes, they are bringing some packages. What is she bringing me? Hmm, looks like mailers. I don't see any packages. But I am expecting packages today. Okay, I'm going to pause till Jane stops barking. I'm trying to get this dog to calm down. So many people to bark at that walk by and we live on a very busy street. So there's lots of there's lots of traffic and foot traffic and delivery people and it's it's very agitating for the canines Ooh, she's barking at the postal worker <laughs> jane be nice they're just trying to do their job that's right <laughs> <laughs> jane, stop. 
Okay. Ah! It's the only excitement she gets, really. All right, settle down. Um, okay, where was I? Ooh, I do have some other um, projects to show. I forget what's in here. Oh, okay, I do have another advent -y type thing. Um, so I, uh, I got the Homespun House um, sock set, advent sock sets, and I opened up the first one. I've actually opened up all of them, <laughs> but this one is the first one because um, we just had the first Sunday of Advent yesterday. So I opened and started a sock and this is also the first um, stitch marker in the Lock and Lou um, Sunday Advents. Um, it's lovely, it's like a little medallion, it's so pretty. So um, this is called, I believe, um, the most wonderful time of the year. And it's on the soft sock base and it came with a mini uh, contrast mini. I think it's the copper colorway. Um, and I am knitting Kay of the Bakery Bears, her prairie socks pattern. It's just a really simple textured stitch. I'm not sure if it's showing up very well. I, I'm, I'm, I'm anxious to keep going with the pattern because I, I want to, to really see how it looks in a longer sock, so. And it's very easy to do. It's called the Prairie Socks uh, by Kay Jones of the Bakery Bears. This is a vintage love sock little bag with the Santas on it. Um, okay. All right, so a few more things that I've been working on. There goes the trash truck. Sorry for all the noise today. Hold on. So a while back, um, Juliet was after me to knit her a sweater and I don't I have knit her sweaters before but when she was really little so they were very easy to do <laughs> um, so I had seen this pattern um let me get it out. it's called the prairie fairy jumper and it's a drops it's this one this pattern here it's a drops pattern it is absolutely free online just type in hey Ben just type in um, Prairie Fairy Jumper and you will find it. Little hu husband interruption. That's okay. So anyway, it's the Prairie Fairy Jumper by Drops and um, it's a, a top-down yoked pattern. can be very Norwegian. So I am knitting it for Juliet and I am actually on the body. So let's see if I can show this accurately. That's the front. This is the back, I think. <laughs> I'm not really sure. No, actually, this is the back. This is the front, I think. I don't know. I'll figure it out before I finish it. <laughs> but it is lovely. Okay, yeah. Wait, this, because oh, here's my tag, my tail. So that would be the back. This is the front. I think that's right. So I've, I've taken off for the sleeves. And now I'm just knitting the body. And the whole thing is knit with um, Icelandic yarn, um, Plotalopi. I, I ordered it from the Icelandic yarn shop. I, I think that's, I think that's what it's called. It literally is the cheapest way to get this yarn was to order it from Iceland, even with the shipping. <laughs> it's the cheapest yarn. It's like five or six dollars a disc. It's the kind of yarn that comes like this. So it comes in a like a plate or a disc. So I am knitting the main color in this lovely blue. And um, on the yoke, the background was like this kind of gray, ashy gray color. Um, I don't remember any of the colorway names, but they're they're on the Icelandic yarn shop website, online shop. Um, and I, I have had yellows and greens and like a deep purple. Um, I think this thing is riddled with mistakes. I don't even care. Juliet doesn't care. She just wants this thing done. And she, let me tell you, she's a little slave driver with me and forcing me to knit on it. <laughs> she's like, you need to work on my sweater. <laughs> like, okay, all right, here we go. <laughs> um, it is a little, it is a labor of love, I will say that, because this yarn is not the 
easiest yarn to work with it it breaks very easily like like if I were to pull it apart like it pulls apart very very easily but it's also very easy to stick it back together um so anyway I have worked out um that in order to get an inch knit I have to knit about seven rows so theoretically if I knit seven rows a day I could knit an inch a day but um I'm not crazy excited about knitting this to be honest just because it is it's like work to knit it it's, it's work to knit this yarn but that being said if I can get it done, it will be the most amazing sweater. Like it will be the warmest thing she's ever put on. Um, so I really do want to power through and, and get this finished for her. Um, once you knit, finish knitting the, the body, there's a little bit of color work around the bottom before you knit the ribbing. And then the same for the sleeves, you, you know, knit the sleeves and then you do a little bit of color work before the cuff. I suppose if I'm in a hurry to get it done I could just leave that off and just have all the color work be on the yoke here. Um, I don't know we'll see. I'm curious how this will block because I think this yarn will bloom quite a bit. I'm really hoping that it's enormously big on her because I want her to have this for a really long time. I actually would like it to be big enough to fit the both of us. Um, I am knitting the biggest size in the pattern and I'm using the size needles it requires and everything. So I really, really hope I can finish this. Check in with me and say, Sarah, have you finished that sweater yet? Because you really need to finish that sweater because <laughs> your daughter really wants it. <laughs> so yeah, I, I really do. It, and it's <laughs> it's definitely a pattern, especially with this yarn, you would only want to knit in the winter time when it's really, really cold out because, I mean, the second it's on my lap and I'm working on it, I feel like I'm sweating. Like it's such warm, insulating yarn, <laughs> the Plotulopi. <laughs> um, it's really fun because one of the nurses I work with is um, from Iceland and she's she's excited about the sweater as well and she is always telling me like how many Icelandic sweaters she has and she's had them for like 20 years because they last so long and that when you wear Icelandic yarn sweaters or sweaters made with Icelandic yarn like if it's the only thing you need to wear out in the winter because they're so incredibly warm um, I mean I'm getting hot just holding it <laughs> It really is true. <laughs> okay, so I, I am excited to get that. I would like to get it done this winter for her. Um, I'm just, I'm so slow with sweaters. Um, it's because I just wanna be knitting socks all the time. <sighs> like like we do, <laughs> us crazy sock knitters. Um, I forgot to show you my Yarnable from last month. This is the November Yarnable. Yarnable, it's called Sinful Delight, like cinnamon. And it's really pretty. I need to finish this. This is only the first sock. It's lovely though. Yeah, I need to I need to get my yarnables caught up. That's for sure. Okay, projects I want to cast on for the winter. Okay, so Molly of a homespun house has been knitting a Christmas blanket out of boucle DK boucle yarn. Um, like 100%, I think it's superwash merino, or hers is anyway. Um, I was inspired by that and I wanted it one too. <laughs> I am not gonna order it from her though because it would never get here in time. It's, we're already into December. So I have sourced my own boucle yarn from a stateside dyer called Rising Tide Fiber Co. And I will show you the colors I picked because she had this base in her shop and it's not necessarily Christmassy but I think it kind of is a little Christmassy but also just fun and festive so I'm gonna start with this one and it's called did I keep the label I don't remember if I kept the label but I think it's called lyrical love or something that's what this one is um, 
this one, this beautiful like plum color is charred cherry. And it's gorgeous green it is old salt. I'm pretty sure she still has these in her shop. So if you were wanting to jump on that boucle blanket train, you could get it. I ordered it on a Tuesday and I got it by Saturday. So yeah. <laughs> Catalina wine mixer is this one. I love this one. And then last, I think this one is, ah, Shell Yeah. So um, I, this is a new to me dyer, but I had heard of her because I think one one of my row one mini subscriptions was with her yarn. Um, so I had heard of her, but I had not ever gotten her yarn before. So um, yeah, I'm really excited to get this started. I, I'm having a little bit of a debate. I'm not sure what size needles. I've never knit with this kind of yarn before. I really hope I like it. I'm a little worried that I'm not gonna like it. <laughs> But Juliet has seen this and she's already expecting it to be her blanket. So um, not only do I have to get a sweater finished for her, but I also am going to have to knit this blanket for her because she's already enamored with it, which I don't blame her because it's, it's really cool. But I'm not sure what size needles to use. Um, I think Molly said in one of her vlogs that she was using a 3.5 millimeter but I have a hard time believing that because I think maybe she's using a bigger one, but maybe she misspoke because there's no, this is thick yarn. Um, I mean, I did a little bit of a gauge swatch and um, US sixes felt really tight. So maybe, maybe I do need to do a seven or an eight. I'm not sure. Um, I'm probably gonna only cast on like maybe 150 or 160 stitches and just knit away. I love this one. I really want to cast this on as maybe the first color. I don't know what I'm going to do. Um, I'm just not sure, but I'm going to have so much fun trying it out. Are you going to try this boucle yarn craze? Let me know. Okay, see, the post lady just came back with another package. See Jane's on it. It looks like an Amazon package. Does, does the post office deliver Amazon packages too? See, now she's ringing the doorbell. Okay, all right. I'll be back. Packages were delivered. <laughs> Got my lock and loo. Oh, I'm so excited. <gasps> okay, I have to pull out the Nutcracker because it is so, well, they're all just so adorable. I've got more gnomes too. Peppermint gnomes, spearmint gnomes. Okay. Oh my goodness, it's so pretty. Okay. This is the cutest little Nutcracker. Oh my goodness. So cute. All right. Let's Let's get it on my Nutcracker socks. <laughs> that was why I got this. It makes me so happy when I have the perfect stitch marker for the perfect yarn. <laughs> Love it. Oh. See, now I wanna knit on these because I have my stitch marker. I'll show you the other one. Uh-oh, sorry, I just knocked you on the ground. Hope you're okay. Here, let's. <laughs> it's, this is what you've come to expect from <laughs> the Love Sock Wool episodes. <laughs> okay, oh, and I also got, I love these so much. I got the little Star of David dreidel. Love that. I'm gonna put these on my, um, uh, the first Christmas. I'm gonna put those on there. That'll be perfect. Okay, and then I got some of the the gnomes. These will go on all the various Christmas socks that I have yet to cast on. Okay, I think that's all I have for you today, guys. What are you working on for Advent, and what are you excited about? Um. 
Tell me, tell me below. Let's discuss. I hope you have a wonderful, restful, peaceful, joyful Advent season, and I will see you next time. Okay, bye. Thing before I go, um, always check out, if you want to, <laughs> my Etsy D-Stash. So I have an Etsy shop. I'll link it in the description below. Um, I'm always listing more yarn in my, I'm getting ready to list these in my Etsy shop. These are um, Advent skeins from years past. Um, all of them are a homespun house. So I um, am going to get those listed. I have lots of other great yarns in there. Um, I, I also am probably going to be de-stashing an entire Advent that I just never got around to knitting last year. Keep an eye on it because I'm always adding to it. Um, so yeah, I just wanted to remind you of that if you are interested. No worries if you're not. All right, take care. Bye.